There is a lot of abuse happening in churches because of what pastors and religious leaders tend to call righteousness, you know, their own form of righteousness or holiness, actually, holiness. So a lot of abusive ministries and manipulative ministries um, end up um, end up putting in some laws and uh, rules, you know, in place. Especially they like to emphasize the law, the Old Testament law and the letters of the, of the word. No, you know, because the letter kills, you know, that's what the Bible says, that the letter kills. It just words and letter, it kills. But what really gives life is the spirit of Christ, what Christ has done. But if you end up in an abusive society or abusive community, abusive church, abusive cult, you will discover that uh, they emphasize do's and don'ts a lot. They emphasize um, rules. They pay a lot of attention to your holiness, as if your holiness is coming from your own power, as if it is their rules, do's and don'ts that determine your holiness or your righteousness so they in some churches like i made as an example the other day that in some churches if you wear earring you are not holy anymore you lost it and you are going to hell so then so the death of jesus is in vain because it's now your efforts and your do's and don'ts that determine if you go to hell or not but it is actually a manipulative method of putting people under subjection it is making you to feel inferior to the big man or to the leaders. So the leaders are always in, in shape and they will make it to look as if they are okay. They are holy. They've been here for a while. They've been accepted. So they are holy. You are the one who is not holy. You see yourself. You are coming from the world. You are worldly. You are carnal. You, you still wear earrings. You don't belong. So if you belong, then you have to confine. You have to conform. You have to be broken. You have to be subdued. So that is what religion does to people. Religion wants to subdue you, dominate you, and make you to surrender your willpower. And you see, there is nothing more powerful in this world than willpower. Will, will is the most powerful thing God has given to each one and every one of us. Even God himself will not violate your willpower. But abusive ministries, religious ministries, legalistic churches, they violate your willpower by manipulating you and brainwashing you. They will make you to feel so much guilt. They will make you to feel like you are a sinner to, to the extent that you will be forced You will be forced to do what you don't like to do. Not that you will be forced to directly, but they will surround you with all kinds of accusations and things. They will even tell you the reason why you are not getting your miracle yet is because you have not removed the earrings or you have not removed the makeups. Or you have not, you know, you know, you, you've not, you've not reduced your hairstyle to not to like to not to, you know, you've not reduced yourself to almost animal stage, you know, for that before you could be accepted. So they will make you have all kind of guilty conscience just because you are not ab abiding by their by their rules. Or they will tell you you don't go for evangelism because you don't you then you can never get your breakthrough. You are not holy enough. Or you don't come to church. You only come to church every Sunday. Oh, wow. You can never be holy. Oh, no, you've missed it. Things will never work for you. You are not holy enough. You are not good enough. So what is? So that's what we are talking about today. Spiritual abuse that happens in churches through works in the name of, oh no, works and legalism. In the name of God, people will put all kinds of rules and regulations out there so that you will always be, you know, trying to measure up and you will never be able to measure up. You will always be measuring up and, you know, it's like, it's now through your works. It's no more what God did. It's now what you have to do. So, that, but we are going to provide healing by the grace of God. Healing and recovery from spiritual and religious abuse. That's what we are examining today. Healing and recovery. So, we are going to open your eyes to it. So that you could discover what has been going on and then you could recover yourself and then you could be healed. The first point we are going to be dealing with today is called legalism. What is legalism? 
Now, what is legalism? As you can see in my note here, legalism is do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. It's basically what we call, in, in a simple form, the do's and don'ts. When you go to church and you are, you know, you, you, you are always being told some do's and don'ts. But you see, Christianity is about personal relationship with God. It's supposed to be between you and God. It's supposed to be you, God, and the Bible, and the Holy Spirit that is in, within you. So let Holy Spirit tell you that you shouldn't do that thing. Read it in the Bible and discover it by yourself. But uh, when you go to abusive ministries and these occult, you know, cultic ministries, they always have some don'ts and do's, do's and don'ts for you. You must do this, you must do that, you must do this, you must do that, you must do this. If you don't do that, you are not good enough. If you do this, you are too bad. If you, all kind of things. That is what we call legalistic. Now, the word legalism, do you see the word legalism? Some people might not know what that word means. The word legalism is coming from the Greek word law, legal. You have, we have it in English too. Do you know legal? Legal? Legal means law. Legal means law, lawful. So legalism means law, something that is just based on law. Now, you know that Jesus is the end of the law. Jesus is the end of the law. The law operated and functioned and before Christ came. So Jesus now is the fulfillment of the law. What that means that he, has, he said he has not come to violate the law, but to fulfill it. That doesn't mean that he has to observe the law. Fulfillment is different from observation. When he says he is the fulfillment of the law, it means that he is the completion of the law. He, he, he puts an end to it. it. He, in him, is the fulfillment of the law. He fulfilled it for all of us. He, because no human being will be able to fulfill the law by himself. Because all the Old Testament people, they tried it to live by the law and nobody could fulfill the law. Jesus is the only one who could fulfill the law. And he fulfilled it. He put an end to it. And like Galatians said, the law is like a schoolmaster that will lead you until you get to Christ. Now that we are in Christ, we live by the spirit, the law of spirit and life. The law of spirit and life. So we are saved by grace, but live by the spirit's life. We live in a, you know, by, by having interaction with the spirit of God, with the spirit of our father. He has given us the spirit of the father through which we call Abba Father. So that means that our personal relationship now with the Father doesn't have anything standing between us. No pastor stands between us. Between us, Pastors shouldn't be standing between us. Pastors should rather be standing outside, pushing us to go closer to the Father, to have a tighter relationship with the Father. The pastors shouldn't we be the middleman. We shouldn't be going through the pastors. We shouldn't be going through the church even. You know, the church is supposed to just be there that we facilitate fellowship and we encourage one another to love God more. It shouldn't be attachment to the church and it shouldn't be attachment to the pastors. It should be attachment to the Father. So, you know, so the life in the New Testament, what makes it different from the Old is that in the Old Testament, it's a life that is based on laws. But in the New Testament, it, we have been set free from the spirit of law, I mean, from the spirit of law and death. Now, that is the Old Testament, law and death. What does that mean, law and death? When you violate one law, you die. And no human being could observe all the laws. There is no way you will not violate one. That's why it's called the spirit of law and death. So in Romans chapter 8, you will see that it's saying that we have been delivered from that spirit of law and death. What do we now live by? We live by the spirit of uh, by, the, by the law of spirit and uh, life. So instead of law and death, we have spirit and life. As long as you are living by the spirit, you have life in Christ Jesus. Because God is spirit. Jesus is spirit. And that spirit is in us. As long as you are, live, you are living in accordance to the spirit of God, led by the spirit of God, you have life. You always have life. But once you drop back to law, you fail. The Bible says that anyone that is observing the law, that Christ is no more of effect to him. Christ is no of no benefit to you once you begin to live by the law again. So if you look at the African churches, you will be so surprised. It is full of abuses. Abuses in terms of law. 
legalism, do's and don'ts. It's like we are not even, it's like the African church has not even read the New Testament. It's like we are not even familiar with the New Testament. It's like the New Testament is odd to us. It's like it's strange to us. It's like it's a new, it's like it's, uh, it's something we are not familiar with. Because we live by the law all the time. We live by, uh, you know, by one rule or the other. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't wear this, don't wear that, don't eat that, don't go there, don't go there, do this, do this. You know, it is all about law. Legalism in the African church is killing the African church, guys. You know, legalism, do's and don'ts, is killing Christian faith. In fact, there are a lot of Christians now in Africa that, you know, they think it is what they do that determines if you go to heaven or not. If they go to heaven or not. They don't know that it is not because of what they do. It is because of what Christ has done. Not what Christ would do, but what Christ has done. They just need to accept what Christ has done, believe it, and live by the law of spirit to life. Spirit and life. Spirit and life. Once you begin to obey and live by the law of by the spirit law of uh, by yeah by the law of law and law by the law it's law and death law only leads to one end death but spirit leads to life so it has been very important for us to to classify to to clarify so uh, so legalism is when you get to a church where they have rules if you don't pay your tithe you go to hell if you don't pay your tithe you cannot be a church member if you don't you know you know give your offering you know you'll be in the bad book if you don't come to a home group then you are not a member if you don't come to uh, two services a week if you don't come to this all kind of rules and laws rules and you know those things they kill faith they kill your faith nobody the, the bible says one anybody that lives by the law Cannot be, Christ benefiting nothing. Christ benefits you nothing once you begin to live by the law. You lose the grace. You lose the grace of Christ. You lose grace when you when you are vowed to live by, by the law. So any church like that where they have rules all over the place, rules and regulations, it means that that church is a controlling church and control is abuse. So any church that is based on legalism, is, a, is, a, is an abusive environment. Because God has called us into liberty. You know, so into freedom, into liberty you are called. So nobody, he said, he said, why should you start in the spirit and end in the flesh? He said, don't let anybody steal your Christ, I mean your liberty, or take advantage of your liberty. No, into liberty we are called, into freedom we are called. So don't let anybody, through their rules and regulations, abuse you. And how does rules and regulation, how does legalism abuse? It breaks your will. It breaks your power. It's not letting you to be led by the Spirit. It's making you to be led by their rules. So as long as you are being led by the rules, you are not going to be led by the Spirit. So you are supposed to be led by the Spirit to have the freedom. If you are not led by the Spirit, because where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So if there is not led, being led by the Spirit by yourself, and it is the rules and law that is leading you, that is an abuse. You are being put under the law. That is an abuse. So any mm, legalistic church is an abusive church. So pay attention to that. Let's go back to that note. Let me, let's go back to my notes. Let me explain this further to you. So what is legalism? It is do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. What was the purpose of the Old Testament law, especially since we are not bound by it today. Simply stated, the hundreds upon hundreds of rules, and, and I think there were 600 and something, 600 and something laws, and regulations making up the law reveal a supreme standard of holiness, a standard no human being can keep. Now, that's why in the New Testament, nobody should be bringing rules and regulations for Christians. Because even 613, yeah, even in the Old Testament where they had the best laws, God Himself gave them gave those laws to man. Nobody made it because they are too lost. Nobody can survive by the law. So we shouldn't be reverting back to Old Testament practices. That's why Christ came. Now Moses brought the law, but Christ brought grace and truth. In the New Testament, what we need to live by the truth. You see, that's why Jesus said. 
Those who want to worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it, what matters in the New Testament is this ability for you to be led by the spirit of God in spirit and live by the truth of the word of God. So what happens here, the highest standard, what should determine your lifestyle is the spirit of God being led by the Father. You are being led by the spirit of God because as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And then you live by the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So this, the highest standard of man's life should be truth. Not anybody's order, not anybody's rules, not everybody's com anybody's commandment, not even Old Testament commandment. We are living now by the law of by spirit and life. If you have been watching our videos and maybe you enjoy them, maybe you don't enjoy them, but still, we need you to help us spread the word. And for that to happen, we only need you to take five little steps. Please help us spread this word by liking the video. Then, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We also need you to press the notification button and the way to do that is to click on the bell. You see the bell there? Click on it. Then, of course, leave your comments. Let us know what you're thinking about each video. And finally, we need you to go and share the world. Share this video on your Facebook timeline, on your uh, Instagram and every other platform that you have. Alright? Let's win the world for Christ. Thank you so much.